today we'll be solving quadratic equations. We're going to look at four methods during this chapter. The graphic method, where the x-intercepts will find other solutions. Factoring, and then using the zero product property. If you don't recall from Algebra 1, if you multiply two numbers together and it equals zero, it means at least one of the numbers was zero. Also, you can solve a quadratic equation by taking the square root of both sides. And lastly, the quadratic formula. Today, we'll focus on the first two methods. Let's look at example one. Solve using the graphic method. I'd like for you to give it a try and graph it. Pause the video. And I encourage you to do that on all the problems. Okay, so if I were going to graph this, I'd find the vertex x equals negative b over 2a. So that's negative a negative 6 over 2 times 1. And we get 6 over 2 is 3. And now you really are thinking of this as being like y equals that. So now we have y equals 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 5. 9 minus 18 plus 5 is a negative 4. So our vertex is 3, negative 4. And so 1 squared is 1. Over 2 goes up 4. And already I can see my x-intercepts. And that's what we're looking for. The intercepts are the solutions. So we intersect at 1, we intersect at 5. So now we can say x equals 1 or x equals 5. Also, you could put it together. That's fine. 1 comma 5. That's another way you could do it. Also, you'll learn later to do it with curly brackets and all other kinds of things. Um, what we are... What we should know from the last chapter is if the intercepts are 1 and 5, the factored form would look like this. Uh-oh, what's my A? Oh, A is 1, so there's nothing in front. So we're going to find that. Um, graphic um, method is probably my least favorite, but factoring oftentimes is faster. All righty. Give example two a try. Okay. Um, if you did a diamond, because it says to factor, you'd get seven on top, negative eight on the bottom. And seven and one, uh, negative on both. Let's see, that would multiply to positive seven, but add to negative eight. So we get x minus seven, x minus one. And order doesn't matter. You could put the one x minus 1, and then x minus 7, same thing. So now we're going to use the zero product property. Let me back that up and use the zero product property. So x minus 7 equals 0, or x minus 1 equals 0. So we add 7 to both sides, and we see x equals 7. Add 1 to both sides. And we see x equals 1. Now, from the beginning, we could have just said, oh, go opposite. But I want to make sure you understand why we go opposite. Also, you could double check your solutions. Get it? Double check. <laughs> so, if you start with your original equation and plug in the 7, in for all the x's, you'll see that in fact it does equal 0. 49 minus 56 plus 7, we get a negative 7 plus 7 is 0. And you could check the 1 and you'll also see that it checks out. So you can always plug your solution in and make sure it works. Alrighty, let's look at example three. Um, you could decide to solve by 
graphic method, or factoring. In fact, on the exam, I'm not even going to tell you what method to use. You use whatever method you think will be fastest and easiest. For this one, I'm just going to factor out the GCF, which is X. And now all my X's are to the first power, so I can use the zero product property and I'm done. So X equals zero or positive six. And I just did the zero product property in my head, adding the six to both sides. Here, the common mistake that students make on part B is to just say, oh, I can take the square root of both sides, x equals four. Well, well you're half right. Don't do it that way because you miss one of your answers. What you want to do is put everything on one side. So move, subtract 16 from both sides. And now remember the difference of two squares. So square root, square root of 16 is four. Make one positive, one negative. And now using the zero product property, I can quickly see that I get X equals negative four. or x equals positive four. You can write them separately, or you can get fancy and do plus or minus four. Either way is fine with me. Alrighty, let's proceed. Example four. Hmm, this is a problem. I'd like to show you two different ways to approach it. The second way will be my favorite. Usually what students do is recognize the GCF is 2, bring it out front, then do the little diamond, negative 30 on top, 13 on the bottom. Is that 10 and 3? No, 10 and 3 won't work. Negative 10. What about 15 and a negative 2? Will that work? Multiply, get negative 30, add, get 13. That looks good. Do I have to split? No. If A is 1, then you're done. So just push the 2 out. A is 1, so I'm done. And I'm just going to write the positive 15 and the negative 2. Using the zero product property, I see X equals 2. Nope, that's not an X. I see, and this is going to feel weird. I see 2 equals 0. I see X plus 15 equals 0. And I see X minus 2 equals 0. Well, the first equation doesn't make much sense, so you can pretty much ignore it. And now, using my zero product property, getting X by itself, I see X equals 15. I see X equals 2. So I have two solutions. Here, this is the way I would have done the problem. From the beginning, when I noticed that everything was divisible by 2, I would have just divided both sides of the equation by 2. And it's really nice when you have a 0 over there. And so the only difference in the methods is that I totally got rid of the 2. Because I didn't need it. Notice, it didn't mean anything anyway. And so that'd be the same diamond, the same factors, and the same solutions. So x equals a negative 15 or a positive 2. Okay, same solutions. Example last. <laughs> um, notice in green... This is uh, very important. The degree tells the number of solutions. Remember, the highest exponent is the degree. The highest exponent. That's our degree. Um, that tells you how many solutions. Notice in example four, the degree was two, and we had two solutions. 
And you'll notice that that holds true. Sometimes you have duplicate solutions and we'll talk about multiplicity a little bit later. So in order to solve this equation, I'm going to put everything on the same side and I'm going to put the exponents in descending powers. So I'm going to go 4, 3, 2, 1 like that to make sure everything is nice and neat. I'm going to bring this over by subtracting 4x squared from both sides. Um, and then I have a minus 12x equals 0. So now I'm in a nice order. Um, I need to factor this. Let's see, do I have a GCF? Yes, you always look for the GCF first when factoring. Now, remember if you have four terms, you want to try to factor by grouping. Let's see if it'll work. Let's see GCF of the first two terms. We have x squared leaves us with x plus 3. Hopefully you remember this from the last lesson. Whenever there's a negative sign, you take that out. And now... That X is still coming down. Remember, you take what's in front of the parentheses. And we know this work because we have a match, a perfect match. You write the perfect match one time. Now, oh, I still don't have all my X's to the first power. So that means I need to continue. I notice here that's the difference of two squares. So I'm going to take my square roots. Um, x here, x here, and the square root of 4 is 2. And I'm going to make one positive, one negative. Now all my x's are to the first power. I can use my zero product property. And if we solve all of those equations, we get 0, negative 2, positive 2, and a negative 3. And you can leave them separate, or if you're fancy, you can mush it up, 0, plus or minus 2, and a negative 3. And you can write your four solutions like that.